Okay, I'll let you introduce yourself because I know how to say your name, but like sometimes I just say names so wrong and it just messes up the whole vibe. Mine's super easy, but I totally get this uh, this dilemma. Uh, my name is Mary Spencer. Hi. Okay, and Mary, I am deep amateur boxing nerd. Well, I'm just a nerd, so we'll just start with that. But <laughs> I've been following your career actually for some time, which is probably might be strange to you because you're like, I'm an amateur boxer. Why are you following my career so much? But I'm got, I got some curious questions. First of all, how did you get into boxing? You know what? It's one of those sports just kind of like for me, just stumbled across. Uh, I had a friend who wanted to get into shape and kind of mentioned it. I hadn't even thought about boxing before that point. Um, and then at some point in high school, I just wandered to the gym and uh, yeah. Okay. No, no amazing story about it, really. Just <laughs> well, isn't that the most amazing story? Because like I like to play golf and all these people, like there's a putter, and people normally have this story, like, oh, I got this putter when I was 10 years old. And like for me, it's like my putter story is terrible. I just went to a store and bought a putter and that's it. But like I feel like those are the best stories because they're unique to you. Like that really is your story. You know what? Now that you say that, okay, I've thought about it. Um, I've thought about all these boxers who are kind of born into boxing families. And part of me thinks like, that's really cool. But then part of me thinks like, is that cool? Because they didn't just kind of end up there the way I ended up there. They didn't have that draw of just nothing really pushing them, just kind of like, hmm, curiosity leading, leading them there. So I guess, yeah, maybe it is. Maybe I shouldn't say it's a bad story. Maybe I'll start telling people it's a really good one. I mean, I think it's all about perspective, right? Because there's, for me, at least maybe for other people, there's no better feeling than like learning something new. And you're, you have like that aha moment, I think as an athlete or anything, that's what keeps us going. Or like when I do interviews, it's like, I want to find the best young fighters coming up to make awareness to them. Like, that's always my goal. And I think boxing, that's what draws everyone is like, there is so much to be learned. And when you make those strides, I think that's what keeps people going. Yeah, I agree. Boxing is really, really a special sport, really interesting in a lot of ways. Well, when did this become the focus of your life? Um, I started boxing when I didn't have anything that I was focused on. I was um, 17. I just got kicked out of high school. I had absolutely nothing um, that I was focusing on. I was just kind of doing whatever. So when I first started, um, weird story, I walked into the gym, met this coach, he showed me some things. And before I left, he planted this little idea in my mind that I could be Canadian champion in a year. And uh, I realized later, he says that to everybody. <laughs> but I got really excited about it. And it felt like um, something that I wanted to make important to me right off the bat. Okay. So, and shout out to that OG for having a great marketing tool. That was like probably his little <laughs> pitch. Like he could be a champion, yeah. come back, you know, here's the gym dues, here's the schedule and all that. But just was it the idea of, um, I guess I'm going to go deep in meta, but was it like you're coming out of being kicked out of school and maybe like, there's not a lot of opportunities being presented to you, maybe a lot of negatives. And now all of a sudden you're hearing you could be a champion. And that was very appealing. You know what? It definitely made me think, um, you know, like I knew it was going to be work. I didn't realize how much work it was going to be, but I remember thinking like, this is something it's fresh. It's fresh. I get to start fresh on something. And this coach is telling me that if I, if I train hard, I could be a champion. I have this clean slate that I'm starting from. And so, yeah, maybe, it, maybe it was, um, that was part of the appeal for sure. So how crazy were you in high school? <laughs> I want to lie and say not at all, but maybe a little bit. What was, what do you think the motive, not to get on some deep stuff, but I feel like boxing brings out who you are as a person. Like you can't lie, you can lie with words. You can't lie as an athlete in the ring, right? So there has to be a little bit of that still in you to be still driven as the boxer. There has to be a little bit of like, there's some type of thing, but why do you think high school wasn't working for you? Was it because it's like, I don't know, too chaotic, too many people in the room was the place you were going. It was just like 
unfocused. Well, what basically I'm asking you a lot of stuff is at the, to become a pro boxer, to become a great amateur boxer, you, there has to be a level of structure that you exist within. But in high school, it's obvious something wasn't working. What do you think looking back on that high school didn't offer that boxing did? <clears throat> That's a good question. Um, so, okay, I try and answer with stories and, and that's how I kind of like make sense of things. But I can tell you this, like I got kicked out of school for fighting. And so when I walked into this gym and put two and two together, that hitting someone more than they hit me was going to make me win and be rewarded. I remember thinking that like, so it's a good thing. You know what I mean? And like having that kind of, um, uh, place to look at it differently really excited me you know because I don't think someone who likes to fight I don't think it necessarily means they're a bad person but when you're in high school and you like to fight yeah you kind of get labeled as you know the kid gets kicked out of school for it um but when you walk into a gym a boxing gym and it's like hey everyone there likes to fight and let's see who, who likes it the most and who um wants to put the most effort into it, it it's really it, it makes you kind of look at it from a different angle well like the great nonito donaire senior once told me it's better to give than to receive it's boxing is not unlike christmas and uh i think you kind of got that in that <laughs> lesson you know um no, how no. did how did this <laughs> journey like so talk me through how you become this big amateur boxer in canada and this journey because we got you to the gym. Now, what the heck happens? You're training. You obviously realize you're good. There must be like some major gaps here where you all of a sudden you go from fighting a weird smoker to all of a sudden this is a national tournament. I'm assuming that's like my guess, but help me through this process. What happens in this place? So this coach that I had initially met, he decided to take me to a different coach at the rival gym across town. And I didn't really understand like gym rivalries or anything like that. I was just, I didn't think it was a thing. Um, but he takes me to this other coach and this other coach uh, now has been an Olympic coach four times, but at the time he was at least a one-time Olympic coach, maybe a two-time Olympic coach. And I didn't really know why I was going to see him. Like, I, I didn't know my, the guy that I was working with was saying like, let's go see if he wants to train you. And I was like, okay. Um, and so I started off training with this, this man who had brought people up to this, this level. And um, after day one, he, he wanted to work with me and um, took away some of the obstacles that I had for, for training, you know, on the other side of town, he'd come and pick me up, take me to the gym and, and then drive me to work after. Um, and I think it was just his way of doing things and making champions, it just kind of, I just kind of fell into that routine, you know? So I have zero fights. I'm 17 years old, um, but I'm waking up at five o'clock every day and going to the gym five times a week, um, doing a strength and conditioning program, uh, getting in lots of sparring and working in a gym with uh, Olympians and future Olympians. So I had a really great um, situation from before even being a novice boxer, before ever stepping in to fight, you know, I had really good uh, surrounding and, uh, and things just kind of built off of there, you know, and it was really a normal flow for my coach to go from a few local fights to Ontario championship and then Canadian championship. And because he just took it like, yeah, that's the next thing that's gonna happen and you're gonna win that one. I just kind of followed his lead. And I was lucky in that way to have someone who um, had coached really good people, had a really amazing method of coaching and teaching boxing. Uh, and so I just kind of fell in with the group. Okay. So I want, I'm curious. Well, I mean, that's actually really interesting. I almost gave you like an unsincere answer where I just like, kind of like, Oh, okay, that's great. Okay. On to the next question. But that actually is kind of cool where you're basically just saying, that like, and everything led into the next thing. So basically nothing felt overwhelming because it's just like everything kept moving into the next thing where this just felt like where you're at and 
what is normal and then nothing because i think the crazy thing is some boxers it's like you're fighting someone who's like a they're not going to leave oakland or detroit or wherever they're at and then you fight at nationals and you're fighting one of the three best fighters in the country who might be a world champion you're like what the heck just happened yeah you know so that's yeah, cool to see it yeah okay. we, we we definitely uh started a training routine that was not for novice boxers it was it was for you know champion boxers okay so all y'all out there that aren't doing that y'all need to get on that so um <laughs> How did you get into the Olympic trials situation in America? That's another question I have, because obviously you, you told me Montreal time, all types of stuff. I had to actually look that up. I didn't know what side of the, you know, I'm ignorant American here, but I'm curious why, why America for the Olympic trials? Well, I'll tell you, um, without, without airing too much laundry out here, uh, I really butt heads with, somebody in box what's up everybody it's your good friend lukey and i appreciate you watching this video now if you enjoyed this video be sure to subscribe to the channel leave a comment with suggestions which is the reason you're seeing this video and also if this is just a single video and you're saying where's the full interview look at the upper left hand corner and you can find the full interview or check in our video section we're rapidly trying to improve this channel and it takes support from not just myself, but also people that enjoy the channel to keep me motivated and try to give you the best boxing content. Be sure to go to itrboxing.com for all of your boxing needs. This is Luke.